Hi friends. Yes, we have received the new Pat McGrath Labs Divine Skin Rose 001 Essence. We will cover the product details, look at the texture, have a demo, okay. Also, we'll present the other essences I have in my collection and we'll apply makeup afterwards so we can see this essence in action. And if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia online coach but also have a beauty youtube as you see love to talk about and teach about beauty and movement and i'm a huge pat mcgrath fan i have a pat mcgrath playlist i'm on their pr this was sent to me so a huge thank you to the team for sending the product over we got the divine rose statue okay just to give you that context because i know people are very careful with who they listen to in terms of PR and sponsorships and should I trust this person because they didn't buy it, blah, blah, blah. I understand that completely. So that is the information if you wish to hear from someone else who is not on Pat McGrath's PR list, who doesn't have Pat McGrath videos, who has not spoken about her products, I get it. Okay, I'll see you in another video. For those who would like to know about the essence, well, this retails for $86. And you might be thinking, why is a product that has a milky texture, a texture that we have seen in the market already, especially from the Korean Japanese skincare beauty space, why is it so expensive, Alicia? You know, I won't be able to tell you. I don't know who manufactured this, where they sourced the ingredients. Even though we can see what's in the product, it doesn't tell us the process through which these ingredients were formulated to give us what we see here in this bottle. If you feel that's too expensive, I totally understand. We have plenty of skincare products on the market now that can deliver a similar experience to the Essence because again, when I get into the comparisons, you'll see the other products that can present a similar texture, a similar finish on the skin. And my allergies are killing me today. Excuse the red nose and the stuffy voice my apologies. You know how I love product knowledge. So I dove in and captured some screenshots from Pat McGrath's Divine Skin IG stories, and we'll cover what to expect from the product, what it does, and all that jazz. In addition to the price of $86, this product has a suggested shelf life of 12 months. You get a total of 100 milliliters or 3.38 fluid ounces of product, and it is made in Korea, which is expected considering that this biphase milky texture is one that I first encountered in the Korean skincare beauty space. What is Divine Skin Rose 001 Essence designed to do? Well, boosts moisture, nourishes the skin, fortifies probably from the ceramides in here and delivers a luminous glow to perfect the skin, to calm it, rebalance it, and protect the skin barrier for soft, hydrated skin. A couple of ingredient callouts here. The biphase formula comprised of hydrosphere 18 and rose biotic. Rose biotic. I guess hydrosphere 18 is the marketing term to represent these following ingredients, sweet almond oil, squalene, botanical ceramides. The Hydrosphere 18 and Rose Biotic is here to transform skin with transcendent luminosity while providing long-term hydration. In addition to that instantaneous change of skin, luminous skin, as you use this product more, expect improvements overall in hydration, softening, nourishment, replenishment. And the rose biotic portion of the formula includes the Rosa Damansina flower water and the Rose Santee Folia flower extract. To give some perspective, the sweet almond oil is listed as the second ingredient right after water. Squalene is 18th and the botanical ceramide is the 21st ingredient. I'm not entirely sure how much of an impact the ceramides will have on your skin considering the fact that they are pretty low on the list. It's listed as after macadamia seed oil. In addition, we have sea buckthorn oil also in the formula. The Rosa Damansina flower water is 15th on the list and the Rosa Centifolia flower extract is 19th. And it does have fragrance. I knew when I saw this release from Pat that it was going to. Unfortunately, in the skincare space, especially near the luxe side of the spectrum, they insist on placing fragrance in skincare. It's just expected, I think, with all high-priced items in that category, 
it's gonna smell like something. And because my allergies are so bad this time of year, I can't tolerate fragrance as well as I can outside of this portion of the year. I tried it yesterday, it's fine. I wish it didn't, but again, it's rose to put, they had to put the rose in there. I, I, I understand completely. Now I pulled some article bits here. This is from Bustle. It says that it's formulated for all skin types designed to be applied after cleanser and toner. And right before I pressed record, I washed my face and used my Soon Jung toner, which I have here. I applied this right after I cleansed with the Peach and Lily Power Cleanse, which is practically done. And I might repurchase that cleanser. I forgot how much I loved it. This is for a pre-makeup treat and specifically, probably within context, what Pat used behind the scenes on her models before she applied her complexion products for prep. Pat says from Bustle, backstage, you would have to be careful with everyone's skin. I would often use a light moisturizer mixed with rose water. It's light and gorgeous, and that's how Rose 001 Essence began. Now you see here, again, this texture is something we might be familiar with. It's not entirely new in the skincare space. And I say that because we have here the I'm From Rice Toner that has a similar, if not the same, by face look where it's a milky texture type of an essence, a little more emollient and moisturizing than let's say a watery essence here. This is the Jensen Essence Water that definitely has has a more liquidy feel to it. And the Good Molecules Hyaluronic Acid Boosting Essence is liquidy as well, but it has a little more viscosity. I'll place the Good Molecules perhaps between the I'm From Rice Essence and the Jensen Water Essence. Now here's the thing, although this Divine Skin Rose Essence Formula, not new technology, because Dan Pat McGrath has been in the runway space for over 30 years, maybe at that time, Time, she herself didn't encounter a bi phase type of a lotion, and that's what led her to create her own cocktail backstage. And when you start your own brand, hers did in 2015, she didn't release skincare first, she released makeup. But I'm sure in the back of her mind, she felt strongly about releasing a skincare product that represented what she had to do backstage on the runway for runway makeup to deliver her signature creamy skin texture that another magazine, Gracia, pointed out that Pat's makeup look is distinct from others from the way she presents textures, velvety finishes, celestial sparkle on the eyes and the skin. I'm sure when you see her IG, the demos, these models skin, it's so creamy and milky and silky and just looks so plush. I, I don't know. I guess they've just, just been using this forever. Grazia writes that McGrath's signature skin is creamy, dewy, opaque, but never mask-like. Correct. And again, the impetus for Pat to create a product here from Stylecaster, a transformative formula. Pat wanted to create something for all skin types. That's the effortless first step to awakening our complexion's natural moisture memory, revealing skin we are born with. Reawaken. I understand the potential critique. Why is an item priced so highly that has a formula that's not totally new? Again, I think it's just from Pat's experience and what she had to do on her own to create something like Charlotte Tilbury did when she was explaining back in the day she made her own cream concoction and we have the magic cream. And now we have the magic serum, the magic cleanser, the magic this, the magic that. And with that, I don't believe this will be the last time we see a skincare product product from Pat McGrath. She first started with the essence, who knows what she will release next, okay? And the rose ingredients always touted to be soothing and calming and replenishing. The clean beauty space, I feel, pushed the concept of relying on natural botanicals and plant extracts to deliver the, the best result from your skincare. I don't think natural is necessarily better because the reality is that a lot of these plant extracts and botanicals have to be modified in a lab so they are safe to use on our skin. I don't think it'll be wise to frolic to the forest, pick up a random leaf and rub it on your cheek. 
you might not have any cheek skin left after that. And even before these technological advancements, many people who dealt with botanical extracts and plants had to go through a process where they would extract the medicinal and beautifying benefits of said plant species to disable the defense mechanisms these plants might have that could, I don't know, irritate your skin, make you sick, could possibly kill you. So that's why these methods are important to know that they are in place so that we can get the best from these botanical extracts to, again, leave behind what they could do to us negatively and just take the benefits, which in this case, rose, it can be soothing, right? I think when formulated correctly, but also roses are sought out not only because of their skincare benefits, but because of the fragrance. It is a popular smell and I'm sure Pat wouldn't have it any other way, especially within the environment, applying makeup on models. Uh, it's a high stress environment. So I'm sure Pat used rose water on purpose just so the models could have that calming effect that they could just rest easy at least during their makeup application so that was thoughtful thank you so much pat <laughs> so those are the details what to expect from the product what i think led pat to create this particular formula with the milkier texture the by face technology i don't think we should expect ultra transformative results again for myself i expect my tretinoin my ha serum my vitamin c serum to deliver those changes but it's nice to have supporting products that will help amplify the process of the other products that are really going to change it up okay on this complexion so here is the bottle and I kept the box because it is constructed as the foundation bottle box is it has the flap top you're like you look you're showing a box Elise what's wrong with you I think it's pretty in addition to that you get stickers they're very vintage and ethereal in feel i love them these are great i'm gonna put them somewhere i'm gonna put them on my notebook and here is the actual bottle we have a glass bottle with the pink top and gold chrome accents here you just have a basic sticker on the front but as you see this is the product close up you have the milkier texture here on the top and the more liquid on the bottom and when you shake it up you get all milky and this is when you apply it on your skin let's take a look at how it appears in texture. I appreciate not a lot of essence shakes out at once, so there is some control there. I used this yesterday in preparation for this video because I wanted to test my fragrance tolerance. And wouldn't you know, it smells like rose, but there's a nostalgic element to this where I can't quite pinpoint the time in history where I was younger where I smelled something similar. And as I'm smelling it right now, I'm happy to report because I had recognized this last night, it's not as aggressive as I was expecting. Like Shantikai Rose products can be a little aggressive for me. I have to hold off on those. I can't use them during this time of year. It has to be before or after. But this is okay. And I made sure I wore it for a few hours to identify if the fragrance lingers after application. And it doesn't really. So, but that's just my experience. Everyone's olfactory setups are different, right? I just wanted to give you the heads up. Again, having bad allergies. Typically, we'll smell products very much after I applied them, but this ain't too bad. And again, here is the texture. And when you apply it onto the skin, it leaves behind, again, that luminosity, that just beautiful nourished look that's perfect for makeup application. And although Pat had said this is formulated for all skin types, I think it might favor dry, normal to dry skin more than oily. If you are oily and in a humid and hot climate, don't know how helpful this will be. Maybe if it's just before makeup application, perhaps you have a photo shoot or a setup where you need your skin to look dewy and creamy, but you're not looking to achieve that texture every day. Just something to keep in mind. All right, we got the product details out the way. You saw the texture. You listened to my TED talk. Thank you. Why don't you come in a little closer? <gasps> 
that's enough let's now apply our divine skin right on the face so again i like how the shake out does not spill a ton of product out so this is around what i will now apply and i'm pressing it on the skin i actually like the rose smell i'm dumbfounded yes i love pat mcgrath and you might think that comment came from a biased standpoint sure i say that because i was expecting something more aggressive and i'm happy that it's not despite that there is still fragrance in this product if you have very sensitive skin if you suffer from eczema psoriasis those skin conditions don't do well with fragrance no matter how great it smells no matter how much you want to like it so that is the warning 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 and when you press it into your skin it has a, a bouncy texture that definitely is more emollient when you glide your finger on the skin. It's like I applied a light moisturizer and I think that is an ideal texture to have your skin in before makeup application because that's going to encourage the best blend. It will allow the foundation, whatever texture it is, it will allow the foundation to just fuse with your skin in a way that will appear natural and not mask-like. And you see even in the wide shots that there is a natural highlight on the high points of my cheeks simply from the, the dry down of the formula i think it's due to the sweet almond oil the squalene and the other extracts or the ceramides I'm not sure how much of an impact that will have on my skin barrier i would rely on moisturizers that have ceramides higher on the ingredient deck to present those benefits but this is something nice to place before makeup for sure now ideally i would apply my peach and lily serum right after after, followed by the matcha pudding antioxidant moisturizer but because we're backstage now with pat mcgrath let's do what she would do right we'll go in with the makeup no other than pat mcgrath labs skin fetish foundation sublime perfection i will apply this is in medium 16 let's just see what this does last night after i applied the divine skin i went in with danessa's yummy skin blurring bomb powder and man my skin was looking silky creamy smooth so this is quite nice yes before makeup and it makes sense that pat would go with a milkier type of formula for an essence product because again it's consistent with what we see on her ig feed aesthetically her models just have this oh my god the skin texture is just otherworldly again in mother's words and then to apply her foundation over the essence i appreciate the fact that now i am experiencing a more comprehensive pat mcgrath experience as we know when it comes to professional makeup there's always a prep step and now to have this product from the prep leading into the complexion one it's like okay and i understand what mother is doing I got it. So this is how the foundation looks on top of Divine Skin Row 001 Essence. I enjoy the texture my skin is in. It feels replenished and nourished, softened. It doesn't feel greasy or heavy with product either. It has nice adherence. So if you wanted to follow up with more cream products, I think the blend will be very smooth. I threw away Pat's concealer because I bought some new concealer and recently I uploaded my Say Hydra Beam Brightening Concealer video. If you want to take a look at that, please click the card right up next to me, which I think a perfect texture to now apply over Divine Skin. Being that the say is radiant, okay, brightening, skin-like, very much an appropriate product to combine with Pat's foundation. Why did I deal with that? You know it happens, Alicia. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Okay. We're looking smooth there. Eh? Smooth it, smooth it. I still have Mother's Powder. It's nearly done. I have not decided whether to replenish the loose powder because Wayne sent me his weightless powder. I think I'll stick to that for the rest of the season and 
who knows? You know, Pat McGrath is always having sales on her side. Maybe I'll just pick one up when that happens again. I'm gonna lightly dust here under my eyes, through the center of my forehead. I don't want to cover up this. You see, this is natural highlight. Just can't even hold a brush for crying out loud. Just from the product. Yeah, and that just goes to show what type of a finish to expect. I guess depending on what foundation you choose to apply. But again, when I applied Yummy Skin yesterday, the Blurring Balm Powder, I still had a little bit of um, radiance, luminosity. You know we have to use Pat's Divine Blush. I mean, it's only fitting. Let's go in with Golden Nectar first because this powder also has oil in the formula and I think a great pair to what's happening here on the cheekbones. It just beautifully melts into the skin and I think from the Divine Skin Essence with what's in the Golden Nectar Divine Highlighter. I mean, you see, you see what's happening, okay? And of course, Paradise Venus, which I just realized the perfect counterpart to Final Surgeon's Inferno. I, this summer with the blush game fam, unstoppable. I'm gonna take it through the hollows first to create just that beautiful terracotta hue. Ooh, I haven't used Paradise Venus in a bit. Shame on me. I am instantly reminded of why this is one of the best shades ever in my blush collection, period. Following through with Desert Orchid, again, unique shade in the collection. I love combining it with Paradise Venus. I think it's just a perfect gradient from the toasty burnt hue right into like that golden bronze pearl finish. <laughs> yes. I have the Bridges in palette, which is the most recent release. I thought, why not? Let's do a little like accent, accenting. Daring Dandy, I thought would be nice on the inner corners, just as a spotlight highlight moment here. And then taking Forbidden Amour, on the outer part of the lash line. And of course, when Divine Skin started to roll their campaign and Naomi Campbell was presented as like the face of Divine Skin, forget it. Diamond's Desire as our showstopper lid moment. I totally went crazy with Forbidden Amor. <laughs> I was supposed to just apply it as like an outer corner accent shade, but I went in on with my outer lid and started to blend and here we are. All right, I'm gonna apply a little bit of a lash and I'll be right back. Here are some close-up shots of the finished look just so you can see what the texture of makeup looks like when applied over divine skin. And I think you can conclude that it is a beautiful texture, but at the same time, I understand if you already have a product in your arsenal that delivers the same look, right? If you are a fan of Pat McGrath and you adore her work, what you see on the models, the work she's done on runway shows, backstage, and you want the same experience, then sure, get the divine skin. It is expensive and we have seen a many of a sale on Pat's side. I'm not entirely sure when this product will go on sale considering that it just released last Friday, but I would keep an eye out again if you really want this. Again, as I'd mentioned before, if you have the milky types of essences, I show the I'm from Rice Toner, but there's also the Laneige milky type of a toner that I don't have, but I've seen and has been on the market for a little bit. Maybe you'll shoot for that, have a similar experience experience and it won't be as expensive. I were to just stick to the product claims and the expectations, they align. I have the luminosity, I have the beautiful blend, that creamy dewy look on the skin. I think you also recognized on the close-ups, it's there for sure. I don't feel dry, the makeup does not look textured. It is as if what I applied was a cream but it was a, a powder instead. Probably testament to the Divine Blush formula to begin with, as well as the highlighter, but 
man, I just adore how the skin fetish foundation applied over the divine skin. It definitely delivered a creamy texture for the foundation to just beautifully latch on to infuse in a way that what's left behind is just, again, that milky, natural, luminous look to the skin. So much so that now I want to keep using this foundation. Even though I haven't used it for months, I've been loving the NARS, now recently the Yummy Skin. And with that said, I cannot wait to use more products on top of the Divine Skin. Will I incorporate this into my routine? Sure, I see it more as a prep product before makeup application, but at the same time, $86 is a lot to spend on one product that you won't use often. If you are a makeup professional and you have the budget and you just need that product, that one prep product to do the thing, sure, go for it. But if you are a skincare user that is looking for a product that's going to deliver the dewiness, the, the creamy milkiness, okay, then yes, that Divine Skin will give that to you. If you are very sensitive to fragrance, again, just know it does smell like rose, but not like Cap Tree and Evelyn Rose. Not even like Chantecai Rose. It's, it's like a, it's, it's its own rose smell. I still smell it on my face, but I also have it on the back of my hand, so maybe that is rising towards my nostrils. I haven't sneezed though. Off camera, as I'm talking now, I don't feel the urge to sneeze. Maybe that will change throughout the day. Again, as I said before, I'm happy to report that the fragrance is not as aggressive as I was expecting. And when I mean aggressive, I'm talking about Suku skincare fragrance. That stuff smells like straight up perfume. I cannot use it and it's a shame because Suku skincare, like their makeup, just revolutionary in terms of the formulation, but it's just too much, it's too much. But with this, when I apply it, I don't have the urge to wash it off. I don't feel heavily enveloped with fragrance, with rose. I don't have a brewing headache. We're okay. So all that to say, yes, this was sent to me. I'm a Pat McGrath fan. I'm not a fan of fragrance and skincare, but I do really love the product. I just enjoy how my skin looks, how the makeup applied. Now, keep in mind, dewy luminosity might not equal longevity. Okay, in the backstage runway setting, we are on the runway and we're off it. Okay, some pictures just to get the look and we're taking it off. So if you want more long lasting makeup, I'm not sure if you will apply this before your complexion step, but if you are dry and you need that texture, that more emollient type of biface milky texture to be your first step before makeup application, then sure, you can consider getting the Divine Skin. All that to say, I'm sure we will share our opinions down below. Let me know how you feel about the price, how you feel about uh, these types of skincare products in general. Let me know if you ordered it, if you're skipping on it, if you're like, I need to see this in action first before I make any decisions. And again, a huge thank you to Pat McGrath and her team for sending this product. I am always grateful for the opportunity and thankful, and again, to share the product and its claim so you can make a better decision. And Pat McGrath now has a YouTube channel, by the way. Have you subscribed? <laughs> Click that notification bell. But I'll see you down in the comments for sure. And until then, fam, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again. Another review tutorial, Divine Skin Extravaganza, monthly favorite or vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon.